So now we're going to take a look at how to factor specific binomials. So let's start with A. It says step one is to look for a GCF. I have an x squared and a 121. They don't have anything common, so I don't have a GCF. Step two is establish if it's a difference of squares. So I'm going to ask myself three questions to tell if I can factor this or not. The first question is, can you take a square root of x squared? Yes, you can, because a uh, square root of x squared would just be x. So question one is, can I take the square root of first term? Question two is, can I take the square root of the second term? Well, square root of 121 is 11, so yes. And then the third question is, is there a minus sign between them? And the answer to that one is yes. So if the answer to all those questions are yes, then step three is to set up the factors and take the square root of the first and the second terms. So we set up our factors, and we're going to take the square root of the first term. So the square root of x squared is x. So that goes in the first spot. The square root of 121 is 11. So that goes in the second spot. And then 1 gets a plus and 1 gets a minus sign. It's called the difference of squares because it's got this minus sign between them. And I just want to go um, off to the side and I want to show you that this does get you back to where you started. Because you can tell if you factored right if you FOIL and you get back to where you started. So x plus 7, x minus x plus 11, x minus 11, let's FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times negative 11 is negative 11x. 11 times x is a positive 11x. A positive 11 times negative 11 is a negative 121. What happens to my middle terms? Those cancel out, and we're just left with x squared minus 121. And you can see that what we got right here that's exactly what we got when we started with, so we did factor this correctly. All right, let's take a look at a few more of these. Um, B, it starts by saying, look for a GCF. G cubed and 25G, those each have a G in common. So we're going to write the G out front. That's like dividing each of these by G. G cubed divided by G is G squared. Negative 25g divided by g, those are going to cancel out, and we get a minus 25. Now, it says establish if it's a difference of squares. Take a look at this. Can I take the square root of g squared? I sure can. Can I take the square root of 25? Yes. Is there a minus sign between them? Yes. Answer is yes to all three of my questions. So I'm going to open my parentheses up. Square root of our first term, the square root of g squared is g, so we get a g in the first term. Square root of the second term, what's the square root of 25? That is a 5. One of these gets a plus, one of these gets a minus, and now please don't forget, you have to bring that GCF down. Since we factored that GCF, that goes into our final set of factors. So now let's take a look at these other two. So let's go over here and take a look at this one. Um, step one says look for a GCF. So I take a look, and is there a greatest common factor here? Um, R squared and 4 don't have anything in common, do they? So now it says step two, establish if it is a difference of squares. We ask ourselves the three questions. Can you take the square root of the first term? Yes. Can you take the square root of the second term? Yes. Is there a minus sign between them? No, there is not. So we can't factor this one. It has to, we have to have yes to all three questions. Um, so again, real quick, square root of the first term, yes. Square root of the second term, yes. But not a minus sign between them. So what are we going to write? We are going to write this is prime. So we can't factor that one. All right, let's take a look at this last one down here. I'll leave the steps up here. So again, step one says look for a GCF. 3 and 27 does have a GCF. What is that greatest common factor? It has a common factor of 3. So we're going to write the 3 out front. It's like dividing each of these terms by 3. It's going to make these cancel out. We're going to have a y squared. 27 divided by 3 is 9. Now, establish if it's a difference of squares. Can I take the square root of the first term? Yes. Square root of y squared is y. Can I take the square root of the second term? Yes. Square root of 9 is 3. Is there a minus sign between them? Yes, there is. I said yes to all three of my questions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break this up. The square root of the first term is y, so we're going to put a y in that first spot. 
The square root of our second term is 9, so we are going to put a 9 in that second spot. 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus, and then we bring that 3. Don't forget to bring that 3 out in front because we have to write our GCF. Even if we factor out at the beginning, we got to make sure that we carry that down to our final answer.